In this demonstration, I am going to walk you through the new data profiling mechanism within Test Data Manager 4.5. Data profiling helps you to identify any personally identifiable information data across multiple data sources. Personally identifiable information, referred to as PII in this video, is key to all regulations that impacts data management. For example, consider the new General Data Protection Regulation legislation, also known as GDPR legislation, which is due to become law in May 2018 places strict rules on the way any company in the world that maintains personal data on any EU citizen manages this data. Many companies are not clear on where personal data is stored across their multitude of systems and whether they are at risk of inadvertently breaching the GDPR legislation when production data is copied to lower tier environments for testing. The penalties for non-compliance are severe. Identifying the PII data will help you in making business decisions to secure, encrypt, archive, or delete the identified data. By the end of this demonstration, you'll be able to identify any PII data in your data sources and generate a report for auditors to review and confirm your findings. There are three personas involved in the data profiling process. A test data engineer configures the data profiling scan, identifies the environment or connection profiles that need to be scanned, initiates the scan job and reviews the scan results to identify where PII data is and identify if there are any false positives. A test data engineer then passes on the scan results report to an internal data controller for review and sign off. An internal data controller reviews the report and signs it off. The final report is then passed on to the management or auditors to review the signed off report and take any necessary actions based on its contents. Here is the TDM portal. I have logged in as a TDE. When I press Data Profiling, the software shows all the steps I must complete to perform profiling. Setting up a profiling job is a multi-way process. Step 1. Based on your data sources, select an environment or connection profile. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will look at connection profiles only. Step 2. On the right-hand side, you can see the classifier packs. Classifier packs define the content you want to search for in profiling. All these are default classifiers. You can also create your own classifier packs. Step 3. You can select scan level, which ranges from basic, that scans 10 rows, to all, that scans every row based on the percentage of data you want to scan in your connection profiles. Step 4. Select the store match samples option if you wish to see values that matched identified tags when investigating a table. Step 5. You can reduce size of the scan by including or excluding tables, schemas, and connection profiles. In this demo, I will exclude a table from the profiling scan. I click New Filter, and in Tables, I will type Sys. This will exclude all tables that end in Sys. You can either directly run a scan or schedule it for a later time. I will run this scan job now, so now I click Profile. Here is the scan job that I just ran in the running status. Wait till the job status changes to completed. When the job is complete, I can see the job details here. I can now go and review the scan results. This is the output of the scan. The colors represent risk level per table. You can drag the ends of the risk slider to filter tables based on their risk category and redraw the heat map. Alternatively, you can also filter search results based on table name, column name, tag name, connection profile names, and schema names. Here you can see all the entities that match the string add. In this people table, the scan has identified all these tags as PII data. For the other tables, you can see I have less data. That means less risk. And in the green tables, you can see no PII data is identified. Now at this point, I will select a table and go into the investigation mode. Here, I am looking to confirm that what the scan has discovered is correct and it is PII data. Here there is a column called last name. For the surname tag, you can see examples of data that was found in the scan and I can confirm they are surnames. Here, you will see a random sample of data. This helps in understanding the data present in this table and if the data is PII or not. 
Now that I have a good understanding of data in this table, I will close it and go back to the investigation mode. You can remove incorrect tags. For example, you can see the town tag is incorrectly identified for a last name. You can pin the correct tags and remove all incorrect tags at once. You can also add or remove individual tags. Here I need to add a reason for removing these tags. You can see that the unpinned tag is removed. I, as a profiler, need to review each table and confirm whether the PII data is identified correctly. Now instead of going back to the heat map to review every single table, I can click Confirm and Review Next Table, and it automatically opens the next table in the investigation mode. If, as a profiler, you know that a certain table does not contain any PII data, then you can mark it as Not PII from here. After reviewing all the tables, you can see I have now marked each table as complete. This means that I have validated that the profiling scan is correct. To better understand the profiling scan details in a heat map, you can download all the details of a heat map into a CSV file. I can now create a report of this scan. I will click the download button to download a PDF file on my system and review the report. This draft report contains all details of the scan, which is useful for auditing. At this point, the scan report is ready to be reviewed by an internal data controller. When I click Submit Report for sign-off, the report is moved to the Approval queue. And if I mouse over this, it shows that two approvers are required to approve the report. Now I will log in as the first signee. You can see here under Data Profiling, I have only two tabs, Sign Off and Reports. That is because, as the required signee, I am only allowed to review and sign off the reports. Now when I select the Profiling Scan to be reviewed, I will get an option to download the PDF of the scan report. Click Download View Report to download and review the report. This contains all details of your scan for auditing. Now that I, as a reviewer, am happy with the findings in the report, I click Sign Off and enter my comments. Say, All looks good, and click Sign Off. Here you can see that one of two internal data controllers has signed off the report. Now I will log in as the second signee and review the report and sign off. Click Download View Report to download and review the report. And here is the report to review. Now that I, as a reviewer, am happy with the findings in the report, I click Sign Off and enter my comments. Say, All looks good, and click Sign Off. You will get an option to download different versions of the same report. Depending on how much detail you want to send to your auditor or management user, you can download the report from here. You can also download scan details in CSV format. This is what the audit report looks like and contains all details about the profiling scan and where the PII data is discovered. Now you are ready to profile data. Using Data Profiling now, you can identify any PII data in your data sources and generate a report for auditors to review and confirm your findings. For more detailed information about this product, click the Information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can visit Product Documentation, Support, Communities, or see the learning paths.